In this lecture, we introduce the basic quantities of current, voltage, power, and energy that are used in the analysis and design of electric circuits. We also discuss the important issue of sign conventions for distinguishing between positive and negative values for each of these quantities. Well, the fundamental element in electric circuits is the electron, and the devices and circuits that we'll analyze and study are designed to move electrons for the purpose of conveying information or transporting energy. So to begin with, I'd like you to think about a simple piece of copper wire, and that wire will contain many, many electrons. And if the wire isn't hooked up to some type of electric circuit, then the electrons will be relatively stationary within it. If, however, the wire is attached to some electrical devices, then the electrons might start moving in one direction or another. So perhaps they would move from the left to the right in this diagram. Now the way that those electrons move could be used to send a signal from one person to another, or the movement of those electrons could be converted to light or heat in your home, or they could be used to run a machine or empower a computer. Now, as those electrons are moving, we might look at a particular cross-section of the wire and just count the number of electrons that move through here as a function of time. Now, the number of electrons that would be involved in even the most simple situations is enormous. For instance, the battery in your car needs to push on the order of 10 to the 19th electrons per second through a cross-section just to run one of your headlights. Now you've probably never heard something like that before because engineers don't typically think about electric circuits in terms of the electrons themselves. Instead, they think about the electrical charge associated with those electrons, and rather than measuring and keeping track of the movements of electrons, they keep track of the movement of the electrical charge associated with the electrons. Now if we pick out any one electron in this wire, it's going to have a charge associated with it an electrical charge that's about equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And the symbol we use for a coulomb is capital C. Now actually, if we wanted to put a polarity with that charge, we would associate this as a negative charge. Now, if these electrons were moving in a way that one coulomb passed through a cross-section per second, then we would associate with this wire an electrical current with a value of one ampere. So mathematically, we'd write it this way. What we're going to do is look at the amount of charge that passes through a cross-section as a function of time, and we'll see how much that changes with time. And that quantity, which will have units of coulombs per second, we're going to refer to as the electrical current. Now one coulomb per second is something we're going to call an ampere. More commonly we'll just simply call it an amp and we'll denote it with a capital A. Now though the electrons are the fundamental elements, we'll almost always think about the rate of movement of electrons in terms of this quantity that we call electric current. Now when we analyze and design electric circuits, we'll use standard diagrams for the wires and elements in the circuit. For a wire, we'll use a simple straight line, and we'll denote current through a wire with a small arrowhead like this. Now as we just defined, the current is the rate at which charge moves in a wire. And this has the units of coulombs per second, or amps. A current that corresponds to 4 amps flowing from left to right might be denoted like this. But we could also illustrate the same current with an arrow pointing in the opposite direction. 
provided that we now labeled the current with a negative polarity like this. Now this point is important. A positive current flowing from left to right is the same as a negative current flowing from right to left. Likewise, a positive current flowing from right to left would be the same as a negative current flowing from left to right. When electrons are pushed or pulled through an electrical device like a resistor, an inductor, a capacitor, a light bulb, a computer, or an electric motor, the electrons on one side of the device may have an energy that is larger or smaller than those on the other side. When electrons are pushed or pulled or pushed and pulled through a light bulb, for instance, some of their energy is used to make the light, so the electrons on one side will have more energy than the electrons on the other side. The ratio of energy per coulomb for an electron is called the electric potential or the voltage. The unit for voltage is the volt, which is one joule per coulomb. And the symbol we use for voltage is capital V and that's one joule per coulomb. Now in this figure a positive voltage will correspond to more electric potential on the left side of the element than on the right side. The relationship between current and voltage is determined by the physical characteristics for the electrical device. A voltage that corresponds to a drop of 5 volts from left to right across a device might be denoted like this, but we could also illustrate the same voltage like this. Well, let's think about this. Now the value for voltage tells us how much the voltage increases or decreases if it has a negative sign across the device and the polarity symbols the plus and the minus signs they tell us the direction of increase or decrease so on the left the voltage increases by 5 volts from the minus sign to the plus sign over on the right the voltage decreases by 5 volts the negative 5 from the minus sign to the plus sign. Well it's important to understand that both of these correspond to the same voltage across the device. Now the electric power we associate with an electric device is the product of the current through the device with the voltage across the device. Power has units of watts which are equal to an amp times a volt. The symbol we use for the watt is a capital W and that's an amp times a volt. When computing power it's important to use appropriate sign conventions. If, for instance, we define our current and voltage like this so that the current arrow enters the device on the side of positive polarity, then we'll compute the power, we'll call P, as the current times the voltage. If, however, we define our current and voltage like this so that the current arrow enters the device on the negative side of the polarity reference then we're going to compute power it'll still be current times voltage but because the current arrow enters on the negative side of our reference for voltage we'll put a negative sign here. Now when we compute a power quantity using these conventions and that quantity is positive we say that the device is absorbing power. This will happen for instance with a light bulb. 
when a power quantity computed this way is negative, we say the device is supplying power. And this would happen, for instance, with a battery. Well, let's look at a few examples. So let's suppose we have a, a simple circuit element. We've got a wire going through that element. And the current flowing through is in this direction. And it has a value of 3 amps. And let's say that the voltage potential is greater on this side than it is on this side by a value of 5 volts. By the way, in this case, the current is not changing with time. The voltage is not changing in time. And when currents and voltages do not change in time, we refer to this as a direct current circuit. The power for this circuit would be 3 times 5, which is 15 amps volts, which is watts. And in this case, we would say we have a power sink, or an element that is absorbing power. Well, let's look at another situation. In this case, we'll denote the direction of our current from left to right, and we'll assign that a value of 3 milliamps. Our voltage will increase from left to right by a value of 5 volts. Now for this situation, the power will be equal to 3 times 5, but since the current enters on the negative side of our reference, that'll be negative 15 and then we have milliamps times volts, so that will be milliwatts. And because it's a negative value, we'll say that this is a source of electrical power. Let's look at one more example. Once again, let's have the arrow in this direction. But the value we'll assign with that current is negative 3 amps. Now in that case, our arrow is pointing in this direction, the polarity is negative, so it really corresponds to a positive current in the opposite direction. And let's say that with this polarity, there's 3 kilovolts. So kilo is 10 to the third, so 3,000 volts. In this case, the power, well, the arrow enters on the positive side. So we won't add a negative sign, but this negative sign would be negative 3 times 3k, so that's going to be negative 9, and we've got an amp times a kilovolt, so that'll give us a kilowatt. And because that's negative, we once again have a source that's supplying power to our circuit.